My name is Patricia Sieber McGivern and I'm the author of Angel Babies, Messages from Miscarried and Other Lost Babies. Angel Babies is basically the story of my loss, my miscarried baby, and hearing from him four and a half years later, uh, much to my surprise. My husband Tim and I uh, lost a baby. Uh, this was in between my first child and my third child. And this was a very wanted baby. We heard the baby's heartbeat, so the loss was very great for my husband and I. Four and a half years later, as I was waking up from a nap in that in-between state, I heard right next to me, I'm right here, I'm right here. And my eyes popped open and I realized I was alone in the room. I thought it was my youngest daughter, Megan, who was napping upstairs. So I called out to her, you know, come to mommy, and my bedroom door was closed and there was no movement. So I went out looking for her and she wasn't there and I, you know how you're trying to figure out like where did she go and an answer came to me in my mind for lack of another way to explain it that just said you will find Megan asleep upstairs and I thought how can that be the voice was right next to me I couldn't understand how it could be outside the room let alone upstairs so I ran upstairs and sure enough she was asleep when I saw her sleeping, I couldn't make sense of it. The TV wasn't on, the radio wasn't on, there were no neighbors, the voice was clear and insistent and emphatic, I'm right here, I'm right here. And I was just standing there trying to make sense of it and I thought to myself, well, if it wasn't Megan, what did I hear? And an answer came, it's the baby you lost. And with that, I began reeling and thinking about the baby that I had miscarried four and a half years later, earlier I should say. Well, a week later, I went to get a massage and during the massage, the woman said, I see your baby. And from there, it began a discussion of male or female. What does, it turned out, he look like. And I began receiving information that really confirmed that this could be my miscarried baby. Uh, but it was so far outside my belief system at that time that it was, I guess it was too much for me to take in. When he came back, he wasn't too happy. I'd forgotten the experience or his name. And he told me that my life's mission was to write a book titled Angel Babies to help heal the mommies who've lost their babies. And my thought was, wrong mommy, wrong life mission. I wasn't a writer and I didn't know what he expected me to say. What did I know about babies in heaven? I expected people not to believe me and I would tell very few people about my experiences because they were so personal and I didn't want to be judged by them. I was, I didn't know how to go about beginning to write the book and someone just said simply just start talking about your experiences and as I did I realized I have a lot of stories to tell about how Dylan connected with me. And I knew I couldn't be the only one having these experiences. I put an ad in Mothering Magazine and I put an ad in Venture N-Word. And through those two magazines, I began getting responses from women all over the world, from Australia and England and Sweden and South America, Canada, from all different walks of life, telling me these amazing experiences I don't even want to use the word stories. They were their experiences of spirit communication with their baby and repeatedly they said to me, if this helps another mother heal, then please share my story. And Tim wants me to be sure to say for the dads too, because the dads also grieve uh, the loss of the children. 
what ended up happening was that their experiences validated my experiences. Well, after I finally wrote the book, I was sure that they would make sure it got published. And so I went off to the book expo with a friend of mine, sure that I would be discovered, and uh, very surprised when I wasn't. One night, I didn't know what else to do, and I went out on my back porch, and I looked up at the night sky that I love so much, and just said, God, you know, if I'm supposed to self-publish, then you better show me a sign, uh, like a shooting star. Now, I hadn't seen a shooting star in over a year, and I had been looking. So you can imagine how surprised I was when I saw a shooting star. And the doubter in me, which you'll pick up in the book a lot, that always needs that proof, said, I'm really sorry, God, but I'm going to need another one, just to be sure I didn't make up the first one. And so I looked up, and sure enough, there was a second shooting star. So now I have begun to give talks to small groups, to large groups about spirit communication. The world is ready now. Maybe that's why it took so long for me to get this book out, that it wasn't ready, I wasn't ready. But I think people want to know about this information. My name is Joanne McNamara. I've read the book, Angel Babies. Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, read it early on. And um, I can only say that I know it took a tremendous amount of courage to write this book because of where it goes when you talk about um, men and women who have lost children, lost babies in particular, and especially those who have miscarried. Um, I experienced miscarriage myself and I lost a baby and so I know that um, that's an area in a person's heart and soul that not many people can really relate to or even describe and um, this book uh, was able to do that for me. Even though I lost Dylan, he's brought me so many gifts that I'm grateful Oh, I've got goosebumps. I'm grateful for him coming, even briefly. And I know this book is going to help women who've lost babies. It's going to help the daddies to understand me, even the moms who are going through so much or experiencing their loss as well. It's also going to appeal to anybody who's lost a baby and for anybody who is on the greater path of understanding the soul's journey, you're going to learn a lot from reading Angel Babies, and you'll feel good about it. As Dylan said, I'm paraphrasing him, they're right here. They're right here!